In this video we're going to discuss the third law of thermodynamics. So this third and final law says that the entropy of a perfect crystal at zero Kelvin is zero. So this is going to help address our question of what is the entropy of a substance at zero Kelvin. So if we look at our entropy formula from uh, the statistical entropy, if we have a bunch of degenerate states, S equals KB log W, where W was a degeneracy factor. Uh, for a perfect crystal, this says that in order to get a zero entropy, this says that the degeneracy has to go to 1, or a number that is close enough to 1 so as to be approximately zero entropy, has to go to 1 as the temperature goes to 0. So what this is saying is that for a perfect crystal, there is one and exactly one ground state, and that ground state is the only state which is occupied. So that being the only occupied state, the log of one gives us zero. So the entropy at zero Kelvin will be zero for that perfect crystal. And as I said, this means that at absolute zero, only the ground state is occupied of a system or any, any small number of degenerate ground states. Okay, and then what if we look at the formula for our uh, Gibbs entropy whenever we have non-degenerate states? So for the absolute value of entropy, we have S equals minus Boltzmann constant times the sum of over all states I, probability of state I times natural log of the probability of state i. So in order for this to be zero, what we have to have is that the probability of state one is one, and the probability of everything which is not state one is zero. So the system is entirely located in the ground state in one state, so there is zero uncertainty about where it is. So why might these probabilities all go to zero for everything except the ground state? Well, let's define the energy of our ground state as zero, and everything else is some value which is greater than zero. We remember that our probability for a given state is proportional to the Boltzmann factor, e to the minus ei over kBT. And as the temperature goes to zero, then we're going to have some number divided by zero. So this is going to go to infinity here and then multiplying by minus we get minus infinity. So the probability becomes proportional to e to the minus infinity which is 1 over e to the infinity which is 0. So the probability of any state with energy higher than the ground state approaches 0 as t goes to 0. Now for the ground state you're going to have a 0 on the numerator and so e to the minus 0 is going to be 1 and that's going to be all the probability is going to be located in just that ground state which we've defined to be an energy of zero. So this Boltzmann factor here is what governs the fact that the probabilities for all these other states become zero because there's no energy to promote anything to any excited states beyond just this lowest energy state possible. Okay, and how does this help us with respect to our integral for finding the entropy at a given temperature? Well, we said that S of T is going to be S of 0 Kelvin plus the integral from 0 to that temperature. And if it's a constant pressure process, that'll be Cp of T prime divided by T prime integrated with respect to T prime. So the, first, the third law of thermodynamics here tells us that this value here, the entropy at zero Kelvin, we don't need to worry about that. That just goes to zero. So if we want to find the entropy at any given temperature, the only thing we need to do is we need to say that S of t is this integral here from zero to t of constant pressure heat capacity, t prime over t prime, integrated with respect to t prime. And this is for a constant pressure process. The pressure must stay the same. 
If you wanted it for a constant volume process, you would just replace CP here with CV. So um, because of the fact that we have the third law of thermodynamics, it gives a lower bound for the entropy, saying that it's zero at zero Kelvin for a perfect crystal. And that gives us the ability to assign a specific absolute value of entropy at any given temperature above absolute zero. So now we can define we can define entropy not only in relative terms, but in absolute terms at any value of temperature we choose if we have sufficient data about what the heat capacity of that system is at every temperature.